Alright guys, what is up? Welcome back to another glorious siege battle in Rome 2. This has to be one of the most anticipated battles of the entire tournament so far. We've got the grudge match. The epic matchup between two of the best teams in the tournament. And let me just say this, whoever wins this battle will be moving on to the championship. Oh, this is going to be intense, guys. This is going to be such a fight. Now, I want to explain again uh, the current situation. Now, there's some bad blood between these teams, all right? And it's really important that you stay tuned for the end of the battle because we are going to need your help. I don't want to say what it is yet, but uh, just stay tuned. Don't quit out towards the end, you know, or quit out, Jesus. Don't leave the video because there's very, very some, something very important I need to tell you guys, all right? So stay tuned for that. Now, let me explain what's going on here because we've had some issues uh, between these two teams. Okay, so you saw the pitch battle. You remember the pitch battle a couple days ago? That battle doesn't matter because... The Hungry Wolves showed up to the Siege tournament, or the match, and unfortunately, Corby Fist Bader could didn't make it to the agreed upon time. Now, I didn't want Corby Fist Bader to forfeit because other teams had to forfeit in the beginning of the tournament if they did not show up. But this this matchup here between these two teams is just way too important to see it end in a forfeit. So I thought. You know, it'd be better if the Hungry Wolves, since they showed up for their match, they should be able to pick whether they defend or attack regardless of that pitch battle because it, it, it's a it's a light punishment for Corby Fistbader for not showing up. Now, of course, finally, they've showed up, and this is the start of the battle. We already have some skirmishers opening fire here. Now, I do want to clear some things up that I've been seeing in the comments. Hungry Wolves did not cheat. Uh, they did not cheat uh they people are complaining the the battle where they were defending they claim that there were 10 people in the town center area well um let me just make it clear that every map has different rules okay they have different rules and different amount of troops can be in the inner keep in certain rules also the stairway of that map it's not here but uh, in that map, the stairway did not count as the inner keep. I believe 10 units were allowed in that area. So they didn't cheat, and they would have gotten in trouble, especially because they're taking on the team uh, where one of the players is the host of the tur tournament. Corby Fist Bader, or I'm sorry, uh, Chronic Master Bader is his name, uh, but in-game his name is Unclutched. Uh, so he's the one hosting the tournament. He would have said something. They didn't break the rules, okay? Get that out of the way. The second thing is people are calling uh, the Hungry Wolves salty for making, uh, for punishing Corby Fist Bader. Uh, well, honestly, guys, they are not salty. If we're going by the rules, Corby Fist Bader should have been should have been disqualified for not showing up, like the other teams were disqualified for not showing up. I was the one that actually came in and said, hey, well, how about this? Hungry Wolves get to decide if they attack or defend. I just think that's the, the most fair way. Again, I want to remind you guys that stay tuned for the end of this battle. This battle is intense. It is crazy. So let's go ahead, dive in, do normal speed, and get this one underway. So we are playing at Antioch. Again, the attackers, Corby Fistbader. Yes, they won the pitch battle, but again, they didn't show up the first time, so they are being punished in that regard. Just want to remind you guys. So Corby Fistbader, we have Egypt, Kush, and the Seleucids attacking this settlement. Now on the defending side, of course, the Hungry Wolves, we have Macedon, we have uh, Nabati, and then we have a faction we haven't seen yet. Uh, I believe oh, I'm probably going to slaughter this one. Uh, Gate. Gate, Gate. I'm gonna call them barbarians. I, you know, this is the, they're one of the barbarian factions. They're pretty cool. I forgot how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, more barbarians. Pretty aggressive. Uh, very like offensive armies. So it's pretty cool to see them in action. So as of right now, we are in a bit of a bombardment. Uh, Corby Fist Bader is now going uh, going ahead and using their tortoises uh, to knock down the walls. Also, I want to make a note here that uh, they are focusing, concentrating all of their units 
in one corner of the map. And uh, that's going to really help with the concentration of forces, but at the same time, the defenders also get to concentrate their forces and defend a small area. Uh, we also have some troops in the town center. Uh, this wall right here, so close to the main attacking wall that they are going to be able to skirmish from the town center. I think that's that's absolutely fantastic. So one of the walls are down. Another tortoise is moving up to knock the next section down. We also have another section knocked down over here. So the um, Corby Fistbader being very aggressive with the uh, siege equipment. Uh, really trying to bring down these walls and make as many openings as possible uh, to, um, well, to, to break through. So, and let's, uh, another thing I want to mention here is that the attackers, yes, they, they, ha they have an hour. They have an hour to win the battle. Now, time is against the attackers. If the attackers uh, don't take the city an hour, uh, then it's GG for them. And that's why they, they can't wait too long. They cannot wait too long uh, to um, attack the city. So you really got to try to manage your time wisely here and just you know, figure out what's the best strategy in terms of how much time you want to dedicate in knocking down walls. Obviously, it's an important aspect to sieging because you want to be able to have plenty of breach points. But if you're taking too long, it might bite you in the in the butt so we'll see what happens here again it's only been five minutes you know uh corby fistbader should be fine here there goes another wall down and especially the fact that they are attacking um they are attacking one kind of small corner of the settlement it is really important that they get as many breach points as possible uh because they're going to need every option every opportunity to storm through these these walls uh, also, of course, they've got the gate. I don't really like attacking the gate because, well, it's um, it's tough. There's oil. It's easily defended. So I try to avoid the gate unless they leave the gate undefended. Then I might try to squeeze some troops in there. So, you know what? At this point, guys, let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit and wait for this battle to kind of pick up. Uh, I'm not going to edit anything out. I'm just going to fast forward because um, all we're seeing right now is a lot of bombardment. Uh, we are finally seeing some troop movement here. We're seeing another tortoise moving forward, and we're seeing siege towers moving moving forward. So um, we might get a attack soon. Also, Egypt is pushing up as well. Uh, so Egypt might be the first one to attack the walls here with infantry. Uh, but we'll see how that progresses. Uh, back here, let's. Let, I think they're going to attack now. So let's go ahead and do normal speed, where the siege towers are now. Um, Heading towards the wall, the archers, the Syrian archers for uh, the Seleucids are opening fire. Look at that. Oh my god. That is sick. That is sick. There we go. The siege towers are in place. Egypt over here is about to push. Let's see. Are they going to hold here? I, I can't imagine they would hold back their siege towers because it seems like just now we're getting some barbarians up here. We got some mercenary axe warriors. And now we can see a lot more troop, a lot more troops at the walls, and um, I believe they are gonna go ahead and they're holding. So they're gonna hold. They're gonna hold position. Not a terrible idea. This is good for distracting um, defenders. It makes a lot of forces commit to over here, and then if you hold back, you can focus other areas. Um, so yeah, this is a a slow approach compared to most of these siege battles in this tournament. Corby Fist Bader using their skirmishers quite a lot here, trying to soften up the defenders. Uh, the Hungry Wolves, uh, um, Hungry Wolves are definitely doing the best they can to take cover behind these walls, but also at the same time, they are ready to plug the holes in case infantry start pouring in. Hop lights from Macedon over here. Lots of Macedonians. They're going to be the first uh, layer on this defense. Also, a lot of barbarians over on this side, so... It seems that each player is using their army to focus one point of this defense. That way, the, the micro is a little bit more easy. And I believe the third player, Nabatea, is going to be more of like the support player. They are going to um, send units wherever needed. And also, it looks like he has a lot of troops kind of defending over here. Kind of like the town center. He, you know, Nabatea, Nabatea might be the, the last stand. 
Uh, it seems that the attackers are now going for the siege tower, and it looks like they're not going. It, it, it seems like they're holding back here still. And this is—you got to be careful here because the Thorax swordsmen that, that are pushing the siege tower. I mean, this siege tower is taking heavy damage, and if they don't hurry up, this might catch on fire, and that would be disaster. Well, they've got more siege towers, so it's not that big of a deal. Maybe they're waiting for those reinforcements. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fast forward again, guys. Um, because uh, we are still waiting for the initial assault. Again, I'm not going to uh, edit anything out because I want to, you know, I want to show you everything, even even troop movement. You know, I think that's important. So we're already 10 minutes into this battle and no infantry versus infantry battles yet. Uh, more siege towers moving up. I mean, this is such a delicate situation. Remember, this is for the finale, guys. Whoever wins this. Uh, we'll be moving on to the championship. So this is very important, but like I said, if you waste too much time in the initial attack, it could be disaster because, you know, 10 minutes in so far and nobody's really died. I mean, obviously a couple units, a couple soldiers have died to skirmishing. I believe there's some, some death right here, uh, but nothing major, nothing major. Ooh, that was so close. It hit the wall and then almost hit the troops there, the Thorax Swordsman. Ooh, God. This is like this is like the calm before the storm. This is going to be so crazy intense. I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait to see what happens here. Egypt now shifting his uh, siege towers around. Kush is now pushing up uh, siege towers. So they're really timing this attack. So they are all attacking at the same time. Again, we're going to fast forward here and wait uh, for the push. Wait for the push here, uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we will see some infantry running through the drawbridge of the uh, siege towers and storming the walls or maybe running through the, uh, the gaps here. We are seeing artillery kind of hit the, uh, the infantry hitting in reserve, or trying to hit the infantry sitting in res reserve, the Hungry Wolf uh, team. Hungry Wolves. Um, but yeah, we've got siege towers now. Kush is really focusing a ton of siege towers over here. What is he doing? Now, I guess he might go here and here and here. Um, but yeah, they are really pushing up the siege towers. But they're going towards a breach. So I'm not quite sure what they're doing here. Um, because I just... Are they... Wait, hold on. Okay, so there's a bunch up at the gate. Uh, Egypt has now pushed up troops over here. So Egypt's really trying to stretch out their troops and really put some pressure on this long wall. Um, but over... Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait a second. They are pushing the siege towers in the city. They are pushing the siege towers in the city. Oh. Why? Okay, hold on. What? I'm confused. Why would they do this? Um, it just doesn't seem like a great strategy because one, oh, this seems cheeky. This seems a little cheesy here because the glitch, it, it's, it's very glitchy because you've got these siege towers that are pushing through defending infantry. Um, all right, well, so we've got, they were held in place, but now the troops are having to get off the siege tower to go fight, and they find themselves surrounded. So we've got these siege towers that <laughs> amazingly went through rubble, right? Like somehow they pushed them through rubble, and now we're seeing them fight uh, for this breach point. Would see, I mean, I don't know. This seems a little cheese to me, uh, but... Hey, I mean, I get I it's cheesy, but I don't I don't think it is actually helping them a lot. I don't know, it just seems like this isn't working. I don't know what they're trying to achieve here, but um I I would assume they were better off just charging in the infantry without a siege tower. But I guess it kind of disrupt the defenders here a bit. So, uh, Corby, Fist, Bader, uh, they are the ones using the siege tower tactic, which we haven't seen yet. And we've, oh my god, they're pushing up more siege towers. What is this? 
Oh my god. Okay, so they pushed up siege towers. Now they're also bringing in infantry that don't have any siege equipment. And now I I used to like sending up. I still do it. Yeah, hold that javy. Oh, okay. So I like to use siege towers as a shield. You know, like I would move up siege towers uh, to a heavily like for example, let me let me just do some slow motion here. Let's say there's a ton of archers here, which uh, like defending. Sometimes I would use the siege towers to push up the infantry to protect them against archer fire, then get off the siege towers and charge the breach points. Uh, but here, they are just straight out charging the siege towers into the city. Which is hilariously cheesy. Uh, but that's, hey, if it works, I guess go for it. Um, back over here, they were able to flank around some swordsmen around the uh, Macedonian hoplites. And the siege towers are definitely causing some disturbance in the force or in the defense, I should say. Uh, the disturbance in the in the defenses because it's made this awkward. The, the, you can't hold a choke point properly. And we're seeing a lot of Macedonians break here. Yes, a ton of Macedonians. And the, the unit that was flanking this Macedonian hoplite is now... Uh, shifted back and I think they're gonna go in for a charge. The hoplites are turning around ready to face them. Nice little charge there. Beautiful. Uh, more Egyptians. Egyptians charging into this breach point. Um, back over this way. Uh, still Still nothing. Uh, the Egyptians have completely did like a bluff charge here. Now calling off the siege towers and moving them towards the uh, the main attacking point of uh, where Corby Fist Bader's uh, forces are attacking. And oh, the cult of so uh, Sobek, right? Sobek cultus. Now coming around the flank and uh, charging in. So they're hitting the rear of these Thorax Swordsmen. Um, we also have some Thora Thorax Swordsmen of the Seleucids pushing towards this uh, center area. Nabataean Axe Warriors trying to hold them back. And we also have a small battle here right under the uh, shadow of the tree. Um, where the Thorax Swords are taking on Thorax Swords. So Seleucids versus Macedon. But unfortunately we're having a lot of breaking here. A lot of breaking, and I think the defenders are just going to have to call the retreat. I think, like, these siege towers have completely disrupted things and kind of threw off the balance of this defense. So I'm thinking I'm thinking that they're going to have to fall back. Uh, I, I, well, the good news is that they don't have to hold this wall anymore because Egypt's not going that way. Uh, but they have to hold this gate. But even the gate doesn't seem like it's being attacked. Uh, uh, do we have another siege tower pouring through? Oh my god. What cringe. All right, the siege tower pouring through again. Again, trying to disrupt the uh, infantry of the defenders. And there we go. Mastodon has a new line of hoplites. And it's unfortunate for the defenders. It just seems like for the amount of ground they lost. Good arrow fire coming in. The amount of ground that they have lost... It hasn't been worth it uh, like they haven't killed enough of the attackers a uh, Macedon still f uh, uh, yeah Macedon still fighting the Seleucids for this this tree right here and we still have some Macedonian forces over here as well um, they are surrounded unfortunately for them but um, they are putting up some sort of defense here near the uh, you know close to the walls oh my god this is a problem. Big opening here. Look at this. Huge opening that has been pushed through by Corby Fist Bader. And uh, they have broken through here and now flanked the hoplites. Uh, that seemed to be a big blunder there by the hungry wolves who uh, do not properly have these streets in here defended. And because of it, uh, we've got infantry from Corby, Corby uh, Fist Bader coming around and hitting the rear of these hoplites. 
tragic. So, I mean, I thought the Hungry Wolves were kind of recovering their troops and kind of reforming the defenses, basically trying to get away from those siege towers. Uh, but it seems they just weren't able to get there in time. And now we've got just troops pouring in. Just tons of troops pouring in. And flanks are exposed. I mean, look at this. We've got some armored spearmen trying to hold against Egypt. Well, Kush is right here, throwing javies at their flank. Archer fire coming down. Ooh, good archer fire. Jeez. That just destroyed those Shotel warriors. Where are those archers? Was it these guys who were firing those, those arrows? Or it could have been these archers here. Um, yeah, definitely think it was uh, the heavy bows here. So, um, yeah, it's been a rough start. A very rough start for the Hungry Wolves. This defense is... Uh, has been a little weak here for the initial walls. And to be fair, I mean, I don't think they were expecting that siege tower push. I don't think they were expecting that. All right, more troops moving around. Um, lots of infantry from Kush kind of headed towards this direction. Let's go ahead and turn on the HUD so we can see what's going on completely. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like the attackers, Corby Fist Bader, have taken this big chunk of this corner over, and they still have plenty of reserves. And, well, they've got their attacking siege towers as well, so I'm curious if they're going to still use those. Um, which I think is a little cheesy. I don't know. It, it just seems like it throws off the... Because, like, realistically... You can't move siege towers over rubble like like if this is a real life. I know it's a video game, but you can't move siege towers over rubble. Like it's just too rough of terrain. Like these wheels are not going to get over that rubble, um, and it's just I don't know. It, it just the way the game works. It seems like it's pushing back units. Um, but hey, you know if it's part of the rules, like if it's not breaking the rules, then then uh, so be it. But the thorax swordsmen are holding against the uh, Kush swordsmen. Again, these Thorax Swords have been fighting for this tree. Unfortunately, uh, they're going to meet their match here, and they're just feeling the wrath here of these forces. We also have the Kush's General. Kushite Royal Guard pushing in as well. So they're going to go ahead and fall back as the Thorax Swords continue to hold this front. Egypt is pouring in as well. We do have a nice line here waiting for them. Some armored spears ready to hold. Uh, of course, they're you well, there's a little bit of a gap here, but uh, they are trying to hold as best as they can against the uh, wave of Egyptians. They also have the arrow tower support. And since Egypt is not going to push for this gate, well, until now, uh, Egypt is now attacking the gate. And I don't know, man. Hungry Wolves seem to be a little slow in terms of setting up their defenses and getting troops where they need them. Um, but now we've got this unit who's going to most likely try to take this gate. And if they do that, well, these arrow towers are going to be soon firing at the defenders. But we got some mercenary axe warriors. They're going to go ahead and charge up the stairs and uh, try to take care of the Egyptians who are uh, storming up this wall. Oh, they're going around the flank. The Thorax Swordsmen, they're, trying to, they're most likely going to try to hit these Armored Spears. Oof. Alright. Cab moving forward. They are going to get in range of these Archers. And sure enough, the Archers are going to open fire. Oh, looks sick. Love that. Look, at you can even see the Archers over there. So yeah, they are, they are fighting the good fight. And uh, we've kind of got all the Defenders... They've fallen back to this center point of the city. I think they have completely given up on the walls. They are done attacking the walls. I think it's so stupid that this cliff is here. Like, I, I just think it's silly that lad like ladders are technically in the game, but there's no like real ladders. Oh, here comes, see so what are these camels? Um, yeah, they're just they're basically just finishing up the defenders here and the defenders have called in the, the retreat and they're gonna hold this this inner Crossway this is gonna be their next line of defense So what I was saying is like in medieval 2 you had proper ladders where units had to pick them up and move them And the ladders in this they're just on wheels. They, they look like siege towers, but with the ladder 
which is kind of lame in my opinion like it would be really cool if Rome 2 this cliff wasn't here and you can send up ladders to attack these walls it would be awesome that's my biggest not my biggest but it's one of the things about Rome 2 I don't like in terms of their siege battles but nice little stand here by the armored spearmen holding off many but they while they are only few Pretty epic there, seeing that siege tower on fire in the background. Uh, Sobek, Coltis in the front line as well, trying to help out. Unfortunately, oh, I think that's, yep, Egypt has gotten behind the lines and they will most likely kill these guys. And this is the next stand. This is their next uh, line of defense. Just got to get through a couple troops. Uh, they are taking over the gate because they do want those towers activated. Yep, there they go. The arrow towers have been activated. Now firing at the backs of these armored spears. And they're down to 83 men. Uh, let's see how many they've killed. Uh, they've killed only 47. So these men are most likely going to break very soon. Alright, oh my god. They're still pushing up the siege towers. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Again, like... It, it's a good defense against ant, like arrows, but if they're using it to disrupt defensive formations like this, like a hoplite formation, I think that's kind of cheesy, in my opinion. Um, but again, there was no rules against this, so technically they're not breaking the rules. Uh, so now we got some swordsmen moving up. Um, they might charge in first, or they might just wait for the arrow to, or the siege towers. It's like, what? Can you imagine being these men and just being like, what the hell is happening? Did we? Oh, we get nice. We got some barbarians here. Some mercenary axe warriors charging out, bringing the fight to them. And we got another unit charging through the hoplites. Throwing some jabbies in there. And this intense street battle is underway. And, oh boy. Oh boy. This magical siege tower being pushed by no one is pushing through troops. Look how far it is in any, like their, their enemy lines. Another one's being pushed up. Oh boy. What is this? Like seriously. What is this tactic? Oh my god. Look how, look how far, uh, it's going through their men. Oh, come on. This can't be allowed. Look at this. Look, they are in the heart of the defense. They're still going. <laughs> what? I'm almost, I almost don't want to show this. I, I don't want people to do this online. I mean, this seems really, really cheesy. And look at it. They're trying to kill them. But because these units are so high up on the layers of the siege, the siege tower, they can't stop them. They can't stop the siege tower that is just strolling through the defenses. Oh my god. So, huge battle going on over here on the other side. We got armored spears holding against us, the Seleucids and Kush. Uh, thorax swordsman closing in mixed up uh, mixed with another thorax swordsman sitting in reserve so they're really pushing with a lot of infantry legitimately pushing with infantry over on this side uh, this side the Seleucids are still just hanging out in the middle of this defense and look at this the hunger wolves have slowly pushed further and further back they've got all their troops clustered up in these streets uh, they have some units over on the wings of the streets Trying to hold against the Thor Thorax Swordsman. Or about to face the Thorax Swordsman. Let's see, are they going to charge in? Or are they going to hold? Yeah, they might as well hold. 
Because remember, the time is against the attackers, not the, the, the defenders. So there's no need to get your men killed. There we go. Nice. They got a little return volley there. Um, yeah, so this Seleucid unit's just going to chill here. Finally, the player has decided to get them off the siege tower. But that this right here is total, total cheese. Like, this was bad here, but that siege tower just walking through the defenders, that's big time cheese. And oh, the barbs, man, they're breaking. They are breaking, and Shotel warriors are going to push to the second layer. Thankfully, they've got another layer of troops ready to hold. More This time, mercenary axe warriors. So they're going to be able to hold much longer compared to the spears. Oh, no. Come on. Don't do this. Don't tell me they're pushing up more siege towers. You've got to be kidding me. Well, there goes a little bit of a counter charge from the defenders. Egypt is pushing up troops in the form of a siege tower. We've got some nice move by the Seleucids here. Uh, using this wall to try to get behind the defenses in the streets. Now, naturally, there's going to be some defenders, noble swords, trying to get to these walls to help hold. This looks pretty cool. I mean, look at this. Look at this defense here. Look at this stand. That looks awesome. Very cool. Uh, Egypt, thankfully, is pulling back some siege towers. I mean, at this point... I don't know if it would be a waste of ammo, but I would probably use fire ammo on the siege towers to try to light them on fire and kill the troops inside. But again, I don't know if that would just be a waste of ammo. Would it be better to just use the ammo to kill troops or try to light these things on fire? I don't know. It's one of those questions where it's just like, what's the better situation? All right, so Noble Swords, um, they're fighting pretty hard against these Syrian uh, heavy, wait, sorry, Thorax Swordsmen. Syrian heavy archers are down there. Uh, so a very intense wall battle, very important wall battle as well, because if they lose this, the infantry holding this flank will be, well, outflanked. They can go down here. Let's go back here where, um, the noble swords, the heavy axes are holding. Again, not really. I mean, this is pretty much a bloodbath here. And you see, like, if they moved up the siege towers, you know, it, it, as they have, have them right here, you, you notice how they, they kind of formed like a wall. And this I would get. Like, this I'm totally fine with because it's kind of like a giant shield and it protects your archers from enemy archer fire. That's cool, but once they start pushing the siege towers into enemy infantry, it's a little cheesy, in my opinion. My opinion. Again, I this is, you know, you have your own opinion. If you think this is totally fair, I mean, it technically it is fair. There's nothing against it rules-wise. I mean, technically, there's a rule that states um, you're not allowed to push through troops. So, wouldn't that be considered pushing through troops? I don't know. I don't know. But I guess that is totally fine. Um, more troops. This is a pretty intense uh, kind of choke point here. This is going to be really important uh, for the overall defense. Uh, it, it's a matter of the, the defenders. I'm sorry. The attackers, Corby, Corby, Fist, Bader, they will eventually break through here. But it's a matter of by how much. Like... How much are they going to lose trying to break through here? Um, and as soon as they do, that opens up more opportunity to, well, get behind and flank through the streets. But really, this is the biggest battle uh, skirmish in the fight right here. Brawl, I guess you could say. And I think the defenders are doing a great job of holding this with as little troops as possible. 
And then slowly, slowly sending in reinforcements when needed. This poor guy. Yeah, plop. So a very intense street battle. Now we have artillery coming in. Ooh. Okay, we got some artillery. Now has been activated. Where is that? Oh, it's right here. We've got some Greek ballista firing over these, these homes and going after the big cluster of troops. This could be disaster for the Hungry Wolves as they have a lot of troops right now clumped up in one area. Good tactic by uh, Corby Fistbader. Once again, the siege towers are moving up. Once again. It looks like he's going to use them to try to push through the defenses. Okay, good. He's getting off this one. He's not. He hasn't gotten off this one yet. Lots of breaking going on. Now we have Nabatea throw in some troops in here. Some armored desert hoplites. Try to keep reinforcing this line. Let's see. Is any more artillery uh, open fire? I can't imagine he has a, that much more ammo. Because he did use this Greek ballista quite a lot to uh, knock down some breach points. But it does look like they're loading up another shot. Too many for my liking. How many siege towers must we face? Alright, here it goes. Noble swords coming to reinforce. Going after some archers. Now, these archers used up all their ammo already? Wow. That's kind of weird to see archers that have... Well, maybe they... No, no, they still have ammo. They're retreating them. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why he left his archers out in the open like that. Uh, but if I was this faction, if I was the defenders, I'd move up. Move up and hold right here. Try to kill the troops going up through the stairway. Help the troops who are holding. And there they go. They are moving up. But Nabatea is the only one going in. Oh, no, no. We got, we got more troops here. Noble swords pushing in. Got some axe warriors coming to reinforce this fight. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, so they left the siege tower. See, this I'm fine with. This is totally cool because... They, they, you could argue they were just using it as a shield against archer fire. But if, again, if they, if they push them through like they did this one, yeah. Here comes some pikes, Thorak pikemen moving up. We have uh, some pikemen defending against the enemy pikes. But this is looking a little worrisome for hungry wolves. I mean. It seems like they've lost a lot of ground. They haven't killed enough. Now, they they do have a lot of reserves here. Well, actually, not really. <laughs> not really. It seems like they uh, are running low on reserves. It, it Just a minute ago, it felt like they had a lot of reserves. But now they're having to commit. I'm seeing generals getting close to the front line. Generals, I'm seeing a lot of reserves for the attackers. A lot of reserves for the attackers. The pikes making their stand here. Look at that. That looks sick. That just looks awesome. This pike battle right now is so great. So they're going to make their stand here. I don't know how much longer they can hold. We've got another unit of reinforcements coming in. Some royal peltis. They're going to join forces with the Pikes and bring some swords to this battle. And Nabatea, we also have some Barbarians holding this, this point. Look at this. It's just like two porcupines battling each other right now. All these Pikes everywhere. Nice. So that's a pretty intense battle. Um, we do have... Okay, we got a couple reserves uh, back here, but... They probably want to start moving them up soon. Um, they're doing a good job over on this side. More forces coming in. Mercenary Axe Warriors coming to reinforce. Because Kush is also throwing in some troops to support this assault. Alright, so... 
We got 21 minutes, all right? 21 minutes left of this battle. In 21 minutes, we will have our first finale, like, contestant. We will have our first team in the finale. Again, there will only be one. Who will it be? Corby Fist Bader or the Hungry Wolves? A bitter rivalry between these two. And you are certainly seeing that in today's battle. You can see even the ways that they are playing the game, you can feel the hatred of these two teams. Especially Corby Fist Bader with the Siege Tower tactics. Uh, so over here, the fight is still going on. God, look at that. A gruesome battle. Absolute gruesome battle. They're causing a lot of breaking here. Nice stand by Macedon. Reinforcements coming. Kush trying to break through the gap, but uh, Nabatia is here to plug it. They're not going to prevent them. And look, at they're going to break away. They're going to retreat there. They're going to try. Oh, they're still... Yeah, they're trying to break through. There's a slight gap here, so that's fair. Um, they're trying to get around the flank. And now we got a small unit of armored spears. 45 men coming over to support. Or maybe they're going this way. Because, yeah, they are victorious over here. The defenders are victorious. Hungry Wolves. Uh, and now it seems they're using archers to try to skirmish down the uh, defending forces. God, what a... What a stand. What a fight between these two teams. This is what I'm enjoying right here. This brawl out in this major street is just epic. Fantastic. Um, again, I think the attackers are going to break through here. It's really a matter of how much is it going to take? How many lives are going to be wasted here to get through this defense? And it's great over here as well. It seems the Hungry Wolves are starting to, to make some progress here. They're starting to um, really make the attackers, Corby Fist Bader, uh, take their time and, and make them lose men and in every inch they take. So a good recovery. Good recovery from the Hungry Wolves. But the question is, do they have enough? That is the question. We've got, who knows what we got in here, but is it enough? There we go, oh no. This is huge. Kush has broken through the Hungry Wolves. And now they're gonna go ahead and push to these archers who are gonna have to retreat now. They were moving up to look like to support the infantry. Well, now they're on the run. Kush very wisely not going to pursue. He's now going to try to hit the rear of the defenders. Excellent. And uh, the fight's still going on here. But the biggest... The biggest uh, concern is this side right here and thankfully uh nabatia has some reserved hoplites coming in and i don't know if it's going to be enough but at least it's another unit again trying to slow down the attack here from egypt and kush i mean we've got a brawl of all kinds of different units right here we've got archers and pikes and swordsmen and hoplites spearmen it's intense it's intense and i definitely think the hungry wolves are losing ground now. They are losing ground in that center, and it's only a matter of time until they are completely uh, defeated. Now, or completely defeated in this area is what I meant to say. Um, but it seems that uh, these mercenary axe warriors are fighting uh, these camels. I think the barbarians here kind of made a little push. Ooh. Ooh. Made a little push, but the camels are trying to push them back. Camels are pushing through. 
Again, Cav pushing through is, I, I'm pretty sure, fine. Because Cav is made to push through in it, uh, units. But the Camels are getting into position. And now the floodgates have opened, folks. Kush is pouring through. They're attacking some archers. There's really just one unit of hoplites that are getting surrounded. We're down to the last 15 minutes. 15 minutes and we will have our first contestant for the championship matchup you know i just want to remind you guys that you know this matchup between corby fist bader and the hungry wolves has been such a marathon of a matchup that there's still two more teams of course who are battling for the championship spot um, so whoever wins this matchup is going to win the matchup between uh, Pinky Toes of Zeus and Total Winners. Do you guys forget about those two? I mean, it just seems like the spotlight has been looking over the Hungry Wolves and Corby Fist Bader for so long uh, that, yeah, there's still two more teams, uh, Total Winners and the Pinky Toes of Zeus, which we will see their series after this one. There you have it, guys. The final stand of those hoplites gone. They have been defeated. Now Kush is going to go ahead and quickly move over this way. And they are unfortunately going to surround these troops here. We also, wow, we've got camels that have pushed all the way over here along with some Shutel warriors. Camels are retreating back out of there. Now we got these heavy bowmen. We're fighting a brutal fight against the Shotel Warriors. More camels! More camels coming around. Trying to use the open streets to get some good charges and flanking charges. And now we've got an avalanche just pouring down this main street. Oh, look at this though. Still a lot of reserves from the Hungry Wolves. Now, most of them, to be fair, are archers. But, hey, remember, time is on their side. And if they can slow the advance of, of uh, Corby Fistbader, it's still a victory. You know, it's still a victory if you're using archers to slow them down. Even though the archers will eventually get slaughtered. Pikes doing a great job here. Killing a lot of the defending pikes. I think we've got... Oh, jeez. Yeah, we've got some Thorak pikes from Nabatea. But the Macedonian forces in there are getting shredded. Lots of archer fire. Unrelenting archer fire coming down and crushing the Nabataean heavy archers. Alright, excellent. Nabatea still holding this flank. I'm surprised that they're not being flanked right now. If I was here, I would be rushing troops to kill this unit. Instead, they're using archers? Why are they using archers here? I would have just sent one unit of infantry, and that would have been enough to break these desert hoplites, and you would have saved lives. Men are dying fighting these hoplites, and the sooner you kill them, the better it's going to be. Alright, back over here, Kush. Whole, uh, fighting against these Axe Warriors. Uh, Macedon, um... Looks like they pushed up some troops. Royal Peltis. But it just seems the archers are using their arrows to just destroy this pike formation. There's really not much that Nabatea can do but sit there and take it. And they don't have their pikes out! And they're getting charged by infantry. So this is going to be a pretty quick death. Already they are breaking. More and more archers continue to retreat. 
See, that's a good move right there. Having the archers retreat because that's going to put the attackers in a weird situation. Where it's like, do they keep pushing this way to go after these archers? But the longer you do that, you got to recover, come back, and attack the main center here. Nice little push here. Nabatean Axe Warriors holding this line. We got a lot of troops pouring around. They're most likely going to try to go around this flank. And look at this. Some pikes from Macedon who originally were holding this flank have been called back. I think it's because they realize that they don't have much. They, they probably need to regroup here and set up a line here. Set up a, a defensive line to hold against these guys. At the double. Another wall has been destroyed here. Actually killing some archers. I didn't notice that. Not sure when that happened. But uh, once again, a light defense from Nabatea. And I'm seeing axe warriors and I believe archers in this front line holding them back. Heavy archers falling back over here. There's just so many archers. Look at these deadly mercenary archers from Egypt just... Releasing hell upon the Hungry Wolves. Alright, Camel Spears. Good charge. Good charge into those archers. Archers now just running away. Just running away and that's what they need to do. Again, distract. Distract and prolong. Again, another charge there on these heavy bowmen. Good use of the camels. Nice breakthrough here. Nice breakthrough by Corby Fist Bader. And now the defenses are, well, falling apart. Um, what happened to the spear? The shield bearers. Well, where's the, not the spear. Where's the pike? Ah, here's the pikes. So the Macedonian pikemen have reformed to protect this flank. Only thing that's concerning is that their backs are going to be exposed. And I think that's why they're moving up the general here for Macedon. Try to hold this point. So now we're starting to see the final stand of these troops. We've got Navati and Thorak Pikes. We have Foot Companions and some uh, some Slingers. So, and, a, and an artillery piece. Look at this. Eastern Scorpion. So... Uh, that's what it looks like they've got for their final stand. Now, here's the thing, guys. We've got eight minutes. Eight minutes. And we will have one of our first contestants for the championship. All right. Shield bearers are moving in. Shield bearers definitely don't want the pikes outflanked. What do we got here? Kushite archers charging in. It's getting messy here, boys. It's getting messy. And oh no. The pikes have been surrounded by the Kushite royal guard. And that's causing them to break. And now really that's left out here is the shield bearers. It looks like they formed a, uh, a square formation fighting on all sides. Again, at this point, they're just trying to slow down the enemy. They're trying to kill as many as possible. Now the, the, the avalanche is coming. The avalanche is coming. And all the hungry wolves can do now is hope that the enemies, the iron um, fist baiters, bait, iron fist baiter, uh, if they used up all their ammo. Because if they still have ammo, these pikes are just sitting ducks. So they, they I'm sure, are hoping that they made them use up their ammo. Kush is being very ballsy with their general. I assume the general died? I I'm not sure, but like, why would he charge in his general first like this? 
Macedonian general starting to waver. Unfortunate, because he still has 93 men. Uh, they just don't have the stomach to die today. They don't want to die today. Uh, they are most likely going to break at any moment here. So at this point in the battle, guys, let's look what the attackers have. Let's look at what Team Corby Fist Bader has. Um, well, they've got a lot of archers. They do have some... They've got a lot of infantry. Some archers back here. Some swordsmen still going through the breach. Wow. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I mean... This is going to be close. Because remember, the attackers only have an hour. They only have an hour to break through. Archers now releasing hell. Look at that. Archers are releasing hell upon these soldiers. Uh-oh. Artillery getting a little too close there. The artillery's getting a little too close there. What are they doing? Let's see if he shoots it. No. I don't know what his plan was with the uh, scorpion, but I think he was hoping to set it up at this plateau of the stairs here, this, this platform. But good move by Kush to charge in and try to stop him. All right. All that stands is Macedonian archers. This is all that's left in this town center. Can these units hold? It's not looking good. It is not looking good for the Hungry Wolves. But remember, four minutes left. There's four minutes, and then it's an hour. So time is against Corby Fist Bader. Time is against them. They must push. The pikes here, Macedonian foot companions, elite pikes, stand and hold. Archers, oh my god, projectiles. Look at this, just take a moment here. Hide the HUD, look at the amount of projectiles. Arrows, jabbies, whatever, rocks. People are just throwing whatever they have. Look at this, oh my god, a cap charge. Oh my god. They're now holding these stakes, that's awesome. Look at that. Good use of the defenses here. Ooh, these archers gotta go to work. These archers must start firing. They've gotta chip away. All right, less than, guys, three minutes and we're gonna have our first champion contestant. Three minutes. There we go, now the pikes are in position. Look at that, that's awesome. That is awesome. Oh my god. I don't know, guys. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Here comes the hoplites. Seleucids moving in, sending in support. There's a little gap here. The Seleucids already have forces in the city. They have forces, wow. Noble Swords trying to hold them back. We've got another uh, unit of foot companions of 82 men dropping because of arrow fire. And here comes the rest of the defenders. This is it. They've got to form a defensive line here. It seems they're breaking too quickly. The Hungry Wolves are just barely hanging on here as Corby Fist Bader continues to try to push through these pikes. Look at this. Look at this absolute brawl. God. Just a massacre going on right now. Both sides losing units so quickly. Units are starting to break. There's a minute and 18 seconds. 
That's just how long they have to hold. Cut forward. And now the generals are being tossed into this fight. Now we have the noble swords going in. Less than a minute. We are now with seconds left. 46 seconds left on the clock. Generals are breaking. They've got one unit of archers they have to get to. The archers are wavering. The archers are wavering. If these archers break, it is over for the Hungry Wolves. And Corby Fistbader is going to take this one. And the archers are running. The archers are fleeing. They're trying to get away. Away. And again, they're using the clock. They're using the clock. And here comes Corby Fist Bader. They are charging through. And oh, wait. And that's it. That is it. They ran out of time. And it will end as a victory for uh, the defenders. Now... This is where, remember at the beginning of the video, I said, guys, stay tuned for the very end. Well, this matchup between these two teams have been nothing but a headache. I'm going to be honest. They will come to me as the the deciding, uh, deciding choice here. Like, I have to... Okay, so let me just give some backstory here. And please, listen to this. This is very important. The first issue was with Corby Fistbader not showing up to their match. The Hungry Wolves were saying, hey, you guys should forfeit because other teams had to be disqualified when they didn't show up. I didn't want that to happen. So all the teams went to me and asked for my opinion. I said, well, how about this? How about you let the Hungry Wolves pick uh, whether they get to defend or attack because, you know, they showed up to the match and that way no one has to forfeit. Well, now here's the second controversy. Both teams are claiming they won this battle. <laughs> Both teams are claiming they won this battle. And what you guys are going to do, you guys are going to be the rule committee. You guys are going to vote on who you think won the fight. Now, there is a link in the video description. And this is what both teams are arguing. I'm not going to tell you what I think. Because I don't want to uh, sway the votes or anything or influence you guys at all. But Corby Fistbader, the attackers, they claim that they have won because they had a much larger force left over. And they would have defeated these archers uh, if they just had like a few seconds more. And then the defenders claim they win because, well, the attackers ran out of time. And they didn't take the city in time. And because of that, it's a, it's a defeat. Um, and, you know, they had an hour. Like I was saying, like, they, they were taking a long time to begin the assault. That uh, it really affected them towards the end. So, it's up to you guys. This is going to be important. I will give 24 hours. So, a day, um, a day after the release of this video... Whatever the votes are in, that's the vote. So if you believe that Hungry Wolves have won this match, have won the series, vote for Hungry Wolves. If you believe Corby Fist Bader won this match, won the series, vote. <laughs> I, I mean, what an ending between this grudge match. Vote for Corby for Fist Bader if you believe they won. All right. Um, I, I really can't think of a crazier ending here. Um, the fact that it, it's going to come down to a vote, because what happened is they came to me and they said, well, who do you think won Apollo? I'm like, I don't want to have to pick. I just want to cover the tournament. I just want to look over the battle replays. I don't want to have to make these decisions. So I said, hey, how about you let the people decide? Uh, so you guys are going to decide here. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to say any more because again, I don't want to let you think or I don't want to I don't want to let you know what I think who won um so yeah that's gonna wrap it up here for today's battle
let's end the replay and it, it's just it's kind of anticlimactic that we still don't know who's going to be moving on to the championship until we have the vote um and then we'll see a day after the re release of this uh so of course we have unclutch who also joined the 14th brooklyn thank you buddy um he got 2173 kills um, we got Solo Wing going with 2,000 kills and Corby with 2,900 kills. Kush did really good there. Dan bringing 2,000 and uh, Nabatia only only getting about 1,000. Um, and Ulfur, um, who's Mastodon, getting just under 2,000. So, very intense match. Very intense struggle. Uh, it's going to be crazy. So, one of these teams... It's going to make it to the championship. We'll decide uh, once we see the, the voting. And then next up, guys, what you're going to see is the matchup between uh, the Zeus, Pinky Toes of Zeus and the total winners. And one of those teams will move on to the championship and face one of these teams. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.